Hello, today I'm not up by the farm. Uh, I'm at my friend Andrew Lewis's house uh, in Monmouthshire and uh, for a living Andrew is a farmer but he doesn't just farm uh, animals and crops, he farms this stuff. Uh, so Andrew makes compost, um, <laughs> which is uh, slightly more than I do, in huge, great big piles uh, at a commercial level, and he makes thousands of tons of it a year. Andrew started this business in about 2004, uh, just in a field, and now he has concrete yards, uh, and it is <laughs> a much bigger business. It's quiet at this time of year, which is why it was a good time for us to come and visit. Um, and in the height of summer, it's a very, very busy here indeed. So over on the far side here, uh, Andrew's creating more space uh, to be able to make even more compost. Uh, and in this direction, I'm looking at uh, eight or ten rows of what he calls a windrow. All this compost! <laughs> uh, here there are uh, huge rows that are about 20 feet wide, uh, about 15 to 20 feet high uh, in a triangular shape and the heat that's being generated during the uh, composting draws the air in uh, and then it comes out through the top and they screen the waste at 40 millimetres uh, and then uh, at 20 mils and again at 10 to produce uh, finer and finer compost. And last year uh, I had a whole trailer load of compost uh, delivered here and I used it um, to mostly fill this bed. So it's got a little bit of topsoil in it uh, but mostly it's got that lovely uh, compost and soil conditioner in it. And this uh, is my floral bed. I call it the wide bed. Um, and it's got lots of bulbs in it, herbaceous plants. It's got a couple of uh, low growing shrubs like lavender. And I think it's time I gave this bed a bit of a tidy up to take back uh, some of the dead stems and to get them either onto the compost or to break them up put them on the soil here and that's what I'm going to do with these is just get them on the soil and leave them to rot down in place. Many of the nutrients in this compost uh, will have been used up uh, as these plants were growing last year and I could give it a top dressing uh, of homemade compost. I could ask Andrew uh, to deliver some more uh, of his soil conditioner uh, the compost that he's made on his farm uh, or I could leave it and uh, give it a, a compost tea uh, type feed um, a little bit later in the year and I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, make some uh, nettle and comfrey tea uh, and then water the soil with that uh, in about a month's time uh, when all these plants will really uh, get growing. Because most of these are herbaceous plants, uh, as they've died down uh, during the autumn and winter, uh, their leaves have settled on the, on the soil. I can still see uh, there's some that haven't broken down, but actually most of them have broken down uh, over winter and that will help feed the soil too. Almost all the plants in this bed uh, are flowering and I've designed it um, partly so it's visually attractive um, but also so that it has a really wide range of flower shapes and sizes and seasons. So my hope was that there would be something here almost for the whole year uh, that would um, well, and feed the pollinators, uh, allow our bees uh, to collect pollen and nectar. Uh, and at the moment, uh, I've got uh, some white borage in flower. Bees really love that. 
Um, daffodils are coming. Uh, I've got uh, uh, these are alliums and there are lilies. Uh, so there's a whole host of bulbs in there that are coming up slowly. Um, the Achillea is coming. I can't, I'm really surprised at how well uh, this has done. It has spread so much. I'm going to take a small piece out here um, and transplant it to a different part of the garden. Uh, but this tiny little plant uh, is actually bigger <laughs> than the piece that I put in here uh, last year. Uh, I was given tiny little plants um, as a gift by Erica uh, for my birthday. Uh, that's Erica over at Erica's Little Welsh Garden. If you haven't discovered her channel yet, it's well worth a watch. Uh, so, anyway, Erica gave me uh, some of these and some Coreopsis. And there was something else, and I'm not sure that something else survived. But anyway, these have done really well. And they're great because they, they grow back this tall there. These ones uh, are a sort of raspberry pink, but they have these heads uh, of a flat head of lots of tiny weeny flowers, but they're really accessible uh, for pollinators to get at, uh, to collect the nectar from. Uh, so they absolutely love these. I think, uh, I'm fairly sure that this is, I'm smelling it because I think it's part of the tansy family. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's the same same family as Tansy. Um, so they've got this sort of almost feathery, frondy foliage. Uh, I think they're really attractive plants. Uh, I'm very pleased with them. And at this end of the bed, uh, where it's windier, <laughs> um, this is a Nepetia, Nepeta, I don't know how you say it. It's catmint or catnip. Um, Cats absolutely love the smell of it. <laughs> Sends them a little bit batty. Uh, and so in the summer, I find Monty <laughs> out here rolling, uh, uh, rolling around in it and chewing on it. Um, but it makes him happy, and so why not? So this gets, this gets absolutely smothered uh, in little mauve flowers uh, also much appreciated uh, by our bees and other pollinating insects and my hope is by encouraging uh, pollinators into the garden into this central section they'll also go uh, that way towards the annual vegetable garden pollinate all the beans there uh, and also this direction and pollinate either beans uh, or um, squashes if we've got them there and the hope is just to bring them into the garden now the other thing is to feed our bees because uh, we do have a, a hive of bees uh, for their honey um, and well we have their honey but my main priority was just to, to have bees as pollinators so having got the bees I think it's really important to try and uh, provide them with as many flowers uh, as wide a range as possible uh, for as long a period as we can across the year. Providing soil uh, that grows our flowers so well that also means that the weeds uh, establish themselves and they grow really well uh, in the same conditions. So I've been trying to just keep on top uh, of the weeds as they're growing. So these are uh, creeping buttercup. There's not a dandelion, but something similar. Uh, big clump of unwanted grass here and a dock. I haven't managed to get that whole dock root out so I suspect that will make an appearance again. 
an even in a border uh, as big as this one, which is uh, 17 and a half feet long and four feet across that way. It doesn't take very long uh, just to lift the weeds um, and take them off this bed uh, a few minutes uh, once a week and that will keep it clear and it won't be long uh, before all of this grows uh, so quickly and uh, spreads so much that it blocks out the light uh, for the weeds um, and then this border pretty much looks after itself. After watching um, my full length homestead tour last week somebody left a comment saying it's a mess and yeah they're right it is a mess and what I was trying to show is that it's not perfect here all the time uh, that I do struggle uh, with keeping on top of it um, <laughs> when there's so much to do and it feels so like there's so little time and uh, the reality is that um, doing the garden is only half my job uh, creating videos uh, is another another half um, but it did spur me on um, to do a bit more out here so uh, thank you for your comment saying it was a mess uh, you, <laughs> you spurred me on uh, to get the next bit done uh, so what I've done is uh, got this area cleared of wood and bits and pieces and put this plastic sheeting on it and that sheeting was just lying over on uh, this side along here so what it's done is it's cleared uh, this area for me to get planting in uh, it has allowed me to start uh, killing off the grass and weeds there uh, for use a little bit later in the year now I've still got uh, <laughs> to move uh, this uh, further over. Uh, I, I want to keep a chicken house out here for when we get broody chickens because uh, they can sit on a couple of eggs uh, in, a, in a house. So I'll pop that over there, but it will allow me to move this uh, plastic over. Uh, I've been using it and reusing it, um, which is quite useful. It has got a couple of little holes in it there and here and there, but I think that's fine. Um, so that will clear that nicely and get that prepared uh, and in the meantime I'm really excited uh, that the onions are doing so well and that's uh, onions and shallots uh, and elephant garlic. In fact I had left a pathway uh, down here where I'm walking now uh, so I could put carrots uh, in here but I don't know I will um, maybe I will <laughs> we shall see there's certainly enough room uh, in this row to walk if I need to and I want to put carrots down there what I was hoping to do was use the smell of the onions to disguise the smell of carrots from carrot root fly so I still I do want to try and do that we haven't had a carrot root fly problem here yet um, but having smugly said <laughs> we haven't had it yet guarantee uh, this would be the year that they would arrive with a vengeance I'm quite pleased with how the soil is here this area uh, was uh, where the chickens have been uh, for the last uh, previous three years so we've had chickens and turkeys here uh, and they have had their bedding tipped onto here and they've been working into the soil so it's actually uh, very springy and spongy underfoot uh, whereas uh, over over here where there's been less chicken activity i mean they, they have been on there but but not as much um, it feels more compacted here where i've consciously put a lot of the bedding uh, it is feeling really good so uh, hopefully that will bode well uh, for the crops there this year and in this bed uh, which I call the cottage bed which is filled with plants that came from my parents home uh, I've been putting duck bedding on the top uh, to pile on uh, organic matter and that can just break down over the next few months 
uh, duck bedding isn't harsh like chicken uh, manure is so it's okay to put straight onto the beds uh, there is a high enough nitrogen content in it to not deplete the soil too much uh, of nitrogen to break down uh, the bedding so it's good stuff it's really good for suppressing weeds um, but plants can still grow up through it so I really like a couple of inches uh, of mulch uh, of this bedding it makes it really easy for when I'm cleaning out the ducks uh, and it makes a good layer too well that's it for me today I'm going to carry on weeding and so wherever you are in the world and whatever you've got planned for today I hope it's a good one and I also hope you'll join me again next time.